Y'all, Book of the Month Street took all my money in the month of July. Hi Bookish Besties, my name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. It is once again time to do my pick or pass where I review all of the selections for Book of the Month, this time for the month of July, let you know what I selected, what I was right about with the predictions, what I was wrong about. Book of the Month, I feel, really hit it out of the park for the month of July and they were extra this month. They had, you know, their typical like five monthly curated selections. And then I think they had approximately like 10 add-on selections and my box was full and I think I even have a couple in my box for next month already waiting for me. So we have a lot to go over so we are going to go ahead and just jump right in starting of course with the monthly curated selections. So the very first monthly curated selection was quite the surprise to me and that is because it's the newest release from Sarah Buchanan called House of Glass. Now I'm not surprised because they featured a Sarah Buchanan because they've done that before and they featured all of the books I think that she has done with Greer Hendricks. However I'm surprised because this is an extremely early release I believe this book is not scheduled to be released until August 6th. So we got this book over a month in advance and I personally am very excited about it and I went ahead and immediately added it to my box. This quick take on Book of the Month just says, who killed the nanny? That question lies at the heart of the story of a family coming undone in a creepy DC mansion. And I am personally here for it. I have read all of the books that Sarah Buchanan has co-written with Greer Hendricks and I actually really enjoyed the book that I read by Sarah Buchanan called, I think it was Gone Tonight, which came out last year. I had a really good reading experience with that. So I'm definitely trusting her with this next book that she has written all on her own. And this is definitely one that I won't be able to get to right away just because I'm going to have to wait for the audiobook to be released. But nevertheless, it's on its way to me and I'm hyped for it. The next curated selection was Husbands and Lovers, which is the newest release from Beatrice Williams. This was a book of the month prediction that I made, but it was made for June's prediction since this book came out on June 25th. If there is a book that is coming out at the very end of a month, it is just as likely to be featured in the next month as it is to be featured in the month in which it's being released. So I'm not surprised at all to see this on Book of the Month, but it wasn't going to be something that I featured in my July Book of the Month selections just because I only focus on the month of releases that we are dealing with. This says, from post-war Cairo to modern day New England, this bittersweet tale traces intertwined stories of love and sacrifice. Beatrice Williams has been featured multiple times on Book of the Month in the past. I personally am not gravitating towards her just because I feel like her historical fictions are a little bit more, I don't know, domestic in nature. And I tend to like historical fictions that are like World War II focused or like Revolutionary War focused. So this is not one that I grabbed for my box, but I know that a lot of people are a big fan of hers and so I'm glad that she was featured on there for y'all. Another one that I was very excited to see and another prediction that I had correct was the newest release from Liz Moore called The God of the Woods. Liz Moore's previous release was featured on Book of the Month and I had very high hopes that it would be featured once again so naturally I snagged it up. This surprisingly was placed under the literary fiction category not the mystery or thriller category so I'm kind of interested to see what kind of genre blending Liz Moore does with the story but as a reminder the quick take just says propelled by a mysterious disappearance this epic saga explores the cracks and divisions of a summer camp community. This is one that I certainly quickly added to my box and I'm going to be getting to it as soon as possible. And then another one that I predicted correctly was The Lost Story by Meg Schaefer. Her previous release of The Wishing Game was featured on Book of the Month in the past so I was pretty confident that this one was going to be featured as well. This is one that I really really wanted to add to my box. I was also considering adding The Wishing Game to my box because I read that last month in June for the Amazing Readathon and I really enjoyed it and I figured that if I enjoyed it and I was going to get The Lost Story I might as well have both copies. However, neither one of these made them into my box just because my box was already so full. So I do have these waiting for me next month just in case my box doesn't get full again for the month of August. So this is one that I would have added to my box, but I didn't. This was placed under the fantasy category and it says, let this fairy tale for adults filled with unicorns and hidden kingdoms enchant you with a fable about second chances. I don't typically love fairy tale-esque type stories, but I can enjoy some good magical realism. And last year, some of my favorite books of the year were solidly magical realism with more of that whimsy-esque which I'm only just now starting to love. So I really have high hopes for The Lost Story. I will definitely be giving it a chance and if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out but I'm intrigued by the story which was inspired by the Chronicles of Narnia and I'm really looking forward to reading it when I get it. And then the fifth and final curated selection was the book A Thousand Times Before by Asha Tonki. This was yet another prediction that I got correct. This says three generations of women are woven together by a magical tapestry depicting their family past, present, and future. As I mentioned in my prediction video, Book of the Month is very very fond of these sweeping multi-generational 
sagas. So I am not surprised to see this one here at all. It's not really one that piqued my interest, so it wasn't one that was added to my box. But I am pretty pleased that out of the five curated selections for the month of July, I got three correct and one technically was correct, but for the past month. So I'll take that. Now moving on into the add-ons. When I made the July book of the month prediction video, we already had two confirmed add-ons that were available to add to your box at the time that I was filming the video. That of course was Riley Sager's newest release called Middle of the Night, as well as a new release by Claire Lombardo called Same As It Ever Was. So I'm not going to be discussing those books here. While I was editing that video, three new add-ons were confirmed by book of the month. I mentioned those in the comments on the video, but I didn't actually discuss them in the video. So I want to go ahead and do so here because one of them I did add to my box and that was All the Colors of the Dark by Chris Whitaker. This is one that I did not feature in my book of the month predictions. However, it was in my new release video. I think it was for June. I think this was a June release and I was just very into the vibes of the story. Set in a rapidly transforming 1970s America, this epic complex mystery explores a town where girls are going missing. And I definitely added that to my box. So this is another one that is on its way to me. I'm very excited to get to it. I have never read from Chris Whitaker in the past, but if I like this one, I will definitely be exploring his backlist. Another add-on that was confirmed, which was yet another prediction that I had made in the June Book of the Month prediction video, was Bear by Julia Phillips. This is classified as literary fiction, but I do believe there could be a little bit of a speculative element to it. I remember when I had first heard of this book, I was very, very much digging the vibes of this one as well. Like there was just something about it that really called to me. It says, on a remote island, two sisters find their relationship upended by a remarkable bear that ambles into their lives. However, I have heard some pretty disturbing things about the book, especially the ending of the book. I do not know that this is something I will end up reading because I have a feeling that there could be some maybe, I don't know, animal death or abuse. I don't know that for sure. If y'all have read it, you'll have to tell me, but this is not one that I added to my box because I'm a little bit too afraid to read a book 100% about a bear. But I know that a lot of other people were also interested in this. So if you are, this is there and available for you to add to your box whenever you feel like doing so. And then the final add-on that I knew was confirmed at the time that I posted the video was the newest release by Josh Mallerman called Incidents Around the House. This is one that I talked about in my new release video for June, but not my book of the month prediction video. I'm not really interested in Josh Mallerman or his stories, especially since this one deals with a creepy child. And y'all know that I am just not about that life. But this says, this haunted house horror show about a family stalked by a malevolent entity will have you sleeping with the lights on. So I do know that this is another one that a lot of people were really interested in adding to their box. So again, it is there for you to add if you're interested. So those were just the five add-ons I knew of at the time of my July book of the month prediction video. And there are actually five more to talk about. The first is an early release that I had never heard of called The Ornithologist's Field Guide to Love by India Holton. This is actually in the historical romance category and it says rival scholars ruffle each other's feathers and a few other things after they join forces to combat foul play afoot. This also sounds like it might be a little bit of a cozy mystery as well. It definitely sounds really cute. So if you are a fan of historical romance, this might be one that you want to check out. Another add-on was the new release by Ethan Joella called The Same Bright Stars. This is definitely one that I did feature in my July book of the month prediction video because Ethan Joella's previous release called A Quiet Life was previously featured featured on Book of the Month. So this is one that I'm not surprised at all to see featured there. It says locales and tourists are welcome to this beachside story about family drama, second chances, and sharing good food. I have only read the one Ethan Joella, but it sounds like he writes very character-driven contemporary fiction that have like complex character relationships that might deal with some harder hitting elements like grief and so on. If you are a fan of Ethan Joella, if you really did enjoy A Quiet Life, I would encourage you to go ahead and pick this one up. We also have a thriller called Bad Tourists by Caro Carver. This is yet another one that I did feature in my July Book of the Month predictions. This is definitely one that I was positive that Book of the Month was going to feature because Book of the Month loves its thrillers set in tropical locations. I'm not sure what it is about them, but Book of the Month always seems to have a thriller set in a tropical location. This just says, white sand beaches and luxurious villas turn out to be dangerous distractions in this deliciously dark island thriller. So it also sounds like there could be like an isolationist aspect to it. Those don't always work as well for me as like wintry isolation thrillers, but this is one that I did add to my box because I'm wanting to check it out. Also, if I didn't already mention this, I of course, also added Middle of the Night by Riley Sager to my box because of course I was going to snag that. There was no question about that. This next add-on was actually in the romance category. It's a book called The Love of My Afterlife by Kirstie Greenwood and it says out until death do us part in until death do we meet. This woman may have just found the one in the afterlife. So that's really really intriguing. It says a recently deceased woman meets the one in the afterlife waiting room scoring a second chance at life and love if she can find him on earth before 10 days are up. That definitely sounds like it's going to be an interesting kind of rom-com type of situation 
situation. I'm interested to hear more about that. I don't necessarily think that this is up my alley just because I'm not a big fan of rom-coms, but I can certainly see why this would appeal. It's giving me a little bit of Ashley Poston vibes, but maybe on the less serious side, if that makes sense. So this is another one that was added to Book of the Month for the month of July, if you are interested. Okay, and this final add-on is actually a bit of an unusual one. It's a book called Family Happiness by Lori Colwyn. Now I want to take a second and actually read to you the note from the Book of the Month editorial team because Lori Colwood has actually passed away. She is no longer living and Family Happiness was a book that was written many years ago actually. The note says, one of the best parts of being on the Book of the Month editorial team is sharing with you, our members, a book or author you might not have encountered before. While we usually give this to you in the form of the best new releases, every once in a while something different sneaks up on us. That's why we're thrilled to share with you Family Happiness by the late Lori Colwyn and under the radar talent we're shining a brand new spotlight on. Using a powerful and unique voice to highlight the minutia of domestic life, Colwyn wrote a variety of fiction and nonfiction until her unexpected death in 1992. Her work is character driven but never boring. Each page is steeped in drama, humor, and sheer life. While Colwyn wrote in and about a time decades ago, her singular ability to capture the human experience makes her work timeless. Book of the Month believes that Lori Colwyn still has a story to tell a new generation of readers and so we wanted to give our members a chance to step into her quirky, relatable world. Book of the Month has selected three books that capture the essence of Colwyn's talent. We begin this series with Family Happiness, a story of a woman in a midlife crisis and the messy but beautiful relationships that form it. An ode to the many forms that family and happiness can take, family happiness is sure to strike a chord in any reader. Keep an eye out in subsequent months for more from the great Lori Colwyn. So from what I get from this, we're going to have at least two months in the future that are going to feature some Lori Colwyn books, which is really interesting. I don't know if Book of the Month has ever done that before, at least not to my knowledge, or it's nothing that I've paid attention to in the past, but I thought that was really unique and interesting. So I wanted to go ahead and bring that to your attention. But yes, Lori Colwyn unfortunately has been gone for over 32 years and now her books are getting some spotlight shown on them by Book of the Month, which I think is really interesting and really, really cool. So I just wanted to mention that. All right, everybody, that is it. Those were the main monthly curated selections and add-on selections that Book of the Month featured for the month of July. So like I said, it was a very big month with about 15 books available to add to your box. And I definitely filled my box with five of them. One of them I have actually not mentioned in this video for reasons because it's going to go along with another video project that has not yet been announced on my channel, but it will be soon. So basically by the end of July, once I do my haul in my July reading roundup, you will be able to see what that fifth and final book was that I added to my book of the month selection. But yes, my box was definitely full. And as I mentioned, I have the other two Meg Schaefer's in my box for next month. So next month is already looking to be pretty full as well. As always, if you are a book of the month subscriber, please comment down below and let me know some of the picks that you selected for the month. I would love to know. Were there any books that you were surprised to see added to July for book of the month? I know that House of Glass by Sarah Pacana was definitely one for me just because I wasn't expecting it to be that much of an early release. And also, of course, the Lori Colwyn thing is pretty new and different and very, very interesting. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some type of bird emoji in honor of the Ornithologist's Field Guide to Love, which I think is just the coolest title and it sounds really fun. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with the books that I might talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all.